Hello and welcome to the Mindful Making podcast. This is a video podcast about knitting and about making and the joy of making something with your hands. Um, I am Jane and you've landed here on my balcony. I'm taking you with me outside today. It's a beautiful day and um, I live in Australia in Hornsby Heights, which is north of Sydney. And uh, now there's just a plane coming over. We don't have many planes anymore. They have stopped basically all international flights and um, a lot of the domestic flights as well because of the COVID-19 challenge. Today it's the 24th of March and it's exactly one month ago that I recorded the last podcast. And what a month it's been. It's certainly not the same world we're in today than we were on the 23rd of February. I will not spend the entire video talking about uh, the current pandemic we are facing and the challenging challenges of that, but let's just talk COVID-19 for a while. We are all in this together. All around the world, we have been asked to stay at home. Social distancing has become a new word that we now have as a natural part of our vocabulary. We are keeping our distance one and a half meter between each other when we go shopping, grocery shopping. We stay at home, schools are closed around the world, uh, quarantine, self-isolation for at least two weeks. I know Europe at the moment is the epicenter of the uh, COVID-19 spread. Uh, in Australia, where I am, uh, it was today announced that all bars and clubs and um, fitness centers, movies um, will be closed and they did as of noon today. My kids went to school today. That will be their last day for a while. Tomorrow it will all move into online teaching. So they will be at home together with me. I've been home, uh, working from home uh, f uh, last week as well. So I am starting on my second week working from home and my husband joined me. He's working today. He's a lecturer at Sydney Uni and they also have moved all their lectures to online. He's been very busy in, you know, shifting classes to do it online and, and there will be hiccups, I'm sure. And for the teachers out there, I know the struggle you're in, you're working really hard. And here in Australia, they have actually been abused by, well, well verbally abused, of course, by parents who said it were that, you know, how can they manage to do the social distancing at school and why aren't they closed? And 30% of parents and or of students were staying at home. And that was why the, um, the state government today took the decision of now moving everything onto online so teachers do not have to you know to work with two sets uh ways of of delivering education so tomorrow we'll be all home uh, which will be interesting uh, i think we'll be we'll be fine i really enjoy working from home we live in a beautiful place and it's just um I just feel very grateful that I have the opportunity. And while talking about gratefulness, let me just express my appreciation and uh, heartfelt gra uh, gratitude to all our healthcare workers, aged care workers, public services, police, uh, paramedics, everybody who has to be out there who cannot work from home, but has to be out there working to help protect us and keep us safe. Our um, social responsibility uh, in as a citizen is to obey the rules and stay at home and try to reduce the spread as much as we can. I think we have all seen this exponential curve and we're trying to flatten it so that our health system can cope and keep up with the demands. Um, it is tricky and it requires a lot of us and it is certainly a different world that we are living in today than last week, two weeks prior. 
um, I follow the Danish news and I can see, well, that is my opinion, that, that Denmark is a week ahead of Australia. So I think we are moving towards keeping everybody at home, how many, uh, as, as many as possible. Uh, I for sure um, am doing that and over yeah over the last week sort of my youngest son's football matches have been stopped cancelled until I think end of April or middle of April at least until well we will see at that time how the situation is because of course it changes every day and I've had some uh, I sing in a choir and I will actually, yes, I sing in a community choir and we have uh, stopped our rehearsals. Tonight we will have our first Zoom rehearsal, which will be interesting. We will all be singing at home and that will be fun. So if we just look back the month that has passed, um, coming back to all the singing. So we're on International Women's Day on the 8th of March, this humming song community choir that I sing in um did a performance so we did a flash mob at westfield shopping center in chatswood and uh, i will show you a video of the three songs that we sang and um, hope you will enjoy that <laughs> Today is episode number 17 and you can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram and on Facebook. On Ravelry, I'm Mindful Making AU and that's also the name of my Etsy shop. Uh, on, in my Etsy shop I sell a few um, goods that I sew. Recently I've just uh, made some kits for making your own uh, washcloth or kitchen cloths and this is one of them so this is a tiny little bag where there are three balls of yarn this is the gray combo which is a white a light gray and the dark gray there is the pattern and uh, instructions and here so sort if of, this is then lined with a reusable fabric a customer wanted this particular fabric and um, so i made her a bag and i've sent that off and i made a few extra for the shop so it's just a drawstring tiny bag ideal for a sock project a baby ba oh, a baby jumper or just a a small project of course then also the uh, the kitchen cloths. There are two other options, so I have them down here. 
So that's the blue with the option, or this is um, made up with that um, tie band, and this is a drawstring bag on the gray one, and it can sit on the table like this. So they are up in the in the uh, they are up in the shop. That was the Etsy announcement. So skip that and move on to the knitting part. Let's start with the finished objects. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the latest finished object, which is the Birds of a Feather Shawl by Andrea Mari. I also talked about that project in the last episode where I had gone through my stash to find suitable yarn for that project. It is finished. Uh, and it is sent off to Denmark to be gifted to my mother-in-law. The yarn that I've used for this project uh, turned out, well, these were the four that I decided on. So this is a, um, it is a wool cashmere. It's one of the earliest yarns. I think probably the first yarns that the uh, Garno set in um, northern Jutland in Denmark started with. It's much more tealy green as and then you can see on the screen. And then I had this one which is a jumper that I unraveled. It is also greener than you can see on the screen I think. So this is a Trops alpaca yarn I did a jumper or a cardigan once, but I have unraveled that and uh, I have a few balls of these left. And then it is a um, soft silk mohair in color sky. And then finally, the hero yarn of, of this project is this. This is the uh, what's left. It's a shock, sock yarn from um, Glenhaven Knits. The color is Wren. So it's beautiful color. So this, these, are, this is what is left. So I think the uh, result was good. It's a bit different than um, than the original pattern, but you know we are free free to make decisions of of how our project should look. So that's send off. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, so my mother-in-law hasn't received it yet. Hope she will. She'll get it soon. In the intro video, you would have seen uh, what the table looked like, looks like in front of me. So there are a lot of yarn, a lot of projects, and I'm just looking over over it to see what I should talk about next. Um, I will talk about what is on my needles. So a few things. So I am making a super simple summer tea, which I also talked about in the last episode. And um, it is still here. It hasn't progressed much, even though that what I did was that I ripped it all back because I couldn't get the numbers to work out. So I recalculated everything and uh, I started all over again. And now I am then basically at the same spot as same place as when I showed you last time. So I am at the place where separating for sleeves. Still beautiful, I love it, but you know, with all this happening in the world and all the news and all the things, uh, it I suddenly felt that I lost my knitting mojo. And I think it probably was because I had to do all the thinking and do all the maths and suddenly I couldn't get the numbers to, to match again. So I sort of lost momentum. I will come back to this when I have a bit more energy and a bit more um, so what is the word well energy to get back into the Excel spreadsheet and doing all the maths and 
I'll get back to this one. Um, I'll keep you posted of how I go. Uh, down here in this, uh, in my in my little bag, I have as well this color splash, which will become a little vest for a new family member. A little girl that arrived on the 10th of March. So welcome to the world, little Lily Elise, a little Norwegian girl. So I will uh, make her a little vest and, and send that off as well. So that's just in, uh, you know, once in a while project. Um, so talking about that, I just lost a bit of knitting mojo. So I thought I have to I have to do something, a project where somebody else has done the thinking, has done the math, and I can just put my head aside and just relax. Um, so I decided to jump on a sort of a mystery knit along or oh, it's called knit together apart well that's directly translated from strik sam verfasai so it's a danish uh, designer who is um, releasing a part of a shawl every day on her instagram pro profile so far there are four sections released i don't know how many there will be but we have asked been asked to find seven colors and um, she will then, you know, different techniques and in, in different sections. Uh, and it's it's not too late to to start. I just start joined yesterday. So uh, as I said, four sections have been released. I'm on the first one. So this is then the first section. Uh, almost done. It is a triangle in a a must type stitch pattern and i'm using leftovers let's just see if the color is better over here it's better here look at this um of the circus tonic handmade yarn that i bought for and i used for my timely cardigan it's called christmas special i think so uh, this is the first section and um, well there's something great about having a yarn collection because you can just open the cupboard pick out it's just like being in the candy store I will insert a picture where you can see the colors <laughs> Oh, I will. I will. I will try to work through here, and um, I'll keep you posted on how I go. <laughs> oh, but it was um, there's a lot of fun in trying to find the right colors, and I might change my mind as I did last time for the birds of the feather shawl. But these are the colors that I found in the stash, and um, I'm really enjoying just to work something something that. That I can just relax with so I'll keep you posted on that you might also have seen that I had a pair of shoes or sandals with a lot of pegs on them and maybe you wondered why I had this on the intro video on my table today uh, it's not a new style of shoes it's just having a bit of time on my hand I am having a day off today not a day off but a um, <laughs> a day of work so these sandals have been sitting on the shelves for a long time being ruined and so I thought let's just try to repair them so some super glue and then gluing them all together so now they are just sitting here drying and hopefully I will have my shoes, my sandals back to wear them. 
So this is a way of, you know, reusing things and just going back to basics and repairing and not just throwing them away and wasting a pair of great sandals. So um, I hope I can wear them again soon. Today I also wanted to talk about a technique. So a technique for casting on. And you might think, well, a cast on is a cast on, but I've found that it can differ. Um, the way you use the method and the technique you use for casting on uh, would actually impact the final result. So this one uh, has a rolled hem and this is just using the long tail cast on. And uh, that's, that's what I've traditionally used and is my sort of go-to cast on. Um, and it's it's very, I use it when I do blouses like this, where I want the neckline to not to be too tight. But when I do cardigans, I often use the cable cast on method. And I will insert a video so you can see um, the technique. And uh, then uh, we will talk about why I use that method, method after the video. I want to show you the ca cable cast on method. Your needles, put them aside, start with the yarn, oops, and do the initial knot. And you don't, in this method, you don't have to measure out the yarn and you just need to have a bit so here this is just what I have you know, cast on one extra stitch so two stitches on the needle move it over to the left needle Insert the right hand needle in between the stitches all the way through and then grab the yarn and pull it through and put it back on the left needle. Do it again, so insert between the stitch that you just made and the previous one and here with I'm using double yarn so I have to make sure that I'm in between the stitches and not in between the two strands of yarn grab whoops pull through and then tighten a bit when you put on the left needle so this is how you do the cable cast on. So why I use the cable cast on method, especially for cardigans, because it is because it's it's um, sturdier and it's not so flexible as the um, long tail cast on. So for cardigans, I want it to be a bit more firm. So this is a um, for the uh, for the hobby cardigan. I typically use well in every cardigan, and then on the hobby as well, I use the cable cast on method. And when uh, then adding stitches in in the um, in the hobby pattern, when you do the stitches for the neckline, I would also use um, cable 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 cast on. Sometimes I have found that um, if if the neckline became too wide, that I could save my project, and I did that for for this one, which is the beautiful Skylark Skylark sweater by um, Kim Hargreaves. From it's published in this cherished. 
magazine or one of her you know collections of designs this is an an, an older one and it's yeah it's beautiful so you can see the neckline is wide but i found that it became too wide and it start started to run off the shoulder so in this one i actually inserted an elastic thread band into to this top neckline so it just pulled it a bit together and you can see here that it does that and I have used this jumper over and over again a hundred times and more it's one of my wardrobe favorites it's slightly worn now and I think I need a new one the last thing on my table that I want to talk about is a finished object and not. It is the beautiful Albion sweater. It's a design by Brooklyn Tweed and I made um, this sweater from my, oh it's better to do it over here. I made this sweater for my oldest son for his 18th birth birthday and that's now two years ago. And it is here, so let's put it over here. Beautiful, but you can see, can you see it already? Oopsie. Yes, I have to do something about this. I think it's a pair of scissors that has been too close to the knitting fabric. And when I when I um, made this for him, I actually added an extra uh, pattern section here, but it's too long for him now. And uh, back then, he want he wanted a full textured body, but now he's not so keen anymore for that texture. So he's asked me whether I could. Rip it back up to here and just do straight stockinette, plain stockinette down the body and take off 10 centimeters, four inches of the body length. So that will become the finished object that will be reborn as a work in progress that I will unravel and knit for him again that I think works as well now in these challenging times that I don't have to think. So um, I will do that and show you how I'm going. So I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed being out here with me on my beloved balcony. I sit here every morning. Every morning I go out here with my cup of coffee look at the the sun rising and just looking out on the on the valley that's just my husband standing inside <laughs> and yeah sending me faces and laughing at me and i'm sitting here talking <laughs> i love this place um so i will let me just insert a little video of the views that I've had this morning and a few mornings before that and also you will get the final video of the humming song community choir singing um, and I will leave you with that and stay safe stay at home let's connect via the social media and I, I almost forgot that I will very much appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and also click the little bell so you get a notification when a new video is up I endeavor to do a monthly video for you guys and um, let's connect my Instagram Facebook Wherever we are on those online platforms, I will love 
to uh, catch up with you out there while we are staying safe, pr protecting our vulnerable and elderly uh, neighbors and community members. Stay safe, everyone.